Okay, so the first thing I want to do before I begin anything else is write down my name and period. Okay. So make sure that all of you have a pen and pencil. We will be starting off with um, the definition for complementary colors. So complementary colors. Two colors that are directly across from each other on the color wheel. And let me go ahead and zoom out of this so that I can go ahead and begin painting. So the first color that I want to start with is red. There's no mixing involved, so let's just go ahead and start that one. I'm going to dip my brush into the red. And remember to start off with that little outline that all of you know and love already. And I believe I've told you already that it's kind of like using markers to outline. I know some of us used to do that when we were children in coloring books, outline first, and then you color in with pencil or crayon. Same thing, it's just we're trying to be nice and neat. Remember that craftsmanship counts, always. So I have my red. Now I'm going to go ahead and do my yellow. Let me clean off my brush. Start doing my outline here. So all of you know how to do this already because all of you have worked on the color wheel and the value intensity. So some of this will just be review and a reminder for you of what complementary colors are. And then I'm going to go ahead and do my blue because it doesn't require any mixing as well. Let's get a nice clean line. And I may be going a little too fast. That's okay. I can always just slow down the video. Okay, so there we have the three primary colors. Now I'm going to go ahead and do my green. And remember that you add blue into the yellow. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of yellow into the little couplet. Remember to mix enough for you and your partner. You need to make it last. And partners should be trading off, mixing colors. One person does not do all the work. And all of you know that I like to start off with a little bit of paint and just work my way up. It's just better to start off with a little bit of a strong color when you're trying to make uh, green. So I'm going to go ahead and start. And I think I got a pretty good green. Okay, 
So I'm going to make my outline. And sometimes it's easier to paint when your brush isn't full of paint. So make sure that you are taking some of the excess off of your brush because it can be really hard to maneuver the brush when it's just full of paint. And painting is difficult when uh, you don't have control over the brush. And now I'm gonna move on to violet. So violet is made by mixing blue and red. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of red in a separate little couplet. I'm going to wash my brush because I don't wanna put any of the red into my blue. And I'm going to take a little bit of blue so hopefully all of you can see that. And I'm gonna mix it into that red to create violet. It may look a little too dark on the screen, but it is violet and it'll probably dry a little bit lighter either way. And now let's go ahead and do orange. So first I will put a little bit of the yellow into a separate couplet. And I want to take just a little bit of red because red is a very intense color and it can be very overpowering for the yellow. So we don't want to add too much. And I think I've told you the story about a college professor that I used to have who used to get really upset when uh, we used to say bright. Oh, red is a very bright color. He used to get so upset and say, no, it's an intense color. So I used to kind of tease him and say, well, it's in a kind of the same thing. He used to say, no, like, okay, it's intense. So red is a very intense color. So make sure that you only add a little bit and just work your way up if you need to make it more orange. And I know some of you were a little disappointed when you didn't get full credit because your value intensity worksheet was a little too messy. So make sure that you are paying attention to craftsmanship this time. Okay, and now we're gonna move on to yellow green. Now the way that I remember how to properly make yellow green is to always look at the first word of the hue, yellow, which means that yellow is going to be more dominant in the color combination. So I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of yellow 
And if you have some of that leftover green, you can go ahead and just add it in there. If not, just go ahead and make a little bit more green and add it into the yellow. So let's see, hopefully this comes out good. And it looks like I got it pretty good yellow green. Some people like to call this apple green. So maybe that'll help give you a visual of how the color should look. And now I'm going to make red violet. So once again, I'm gonna put a little bit of red into a couplet. And if you have a little bit left over of the violet that we made earlier, then you can go ahead and add a little bit to that couplet to try to make red violet. Remember that red is more dominant in red violet. If you don't have any more violet, then just uh, mix blue and red and try to get that color going. So I have a little bit left over, so I'm just going to go ahead and mix it in there. And let me go ahead and take off some of this excess. Remember that it can be very hard to maneuver the brush when it has too much paint. And now we have blue-green, which is next. And once again, the blue in the blue-green hue should be uh, more dominant. So I'm gonna go ahead and take some of my green from earlier because I still have a little bit left over. And hopefully that's enough. I think it will be enough since it's just for me. Uh, since you are working with partners, maybe you will have to create a little bit more. And I'm just going to take a little bit of this blue so you can see how much I'm actually adding. Let me see, can you see? Get a little bit closer. And just go ahead and add it in there to make a nice blue grain. And I think I made barely enough paint for myself. get that border going around that inner line. And now we're gonna move on to red-orange the red should be more dominant. So it should look a bit more fiery than this orange that we had here, which might look a little too intense here on the projector, but it does look pretty orange um, on the worksheet itself. So if you have some of that leftover orange, you could probably just add a little bit more red into that. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And I'm just going to start with a little bit. If it's not too red-orange, then you can always add more. And 
and I think I got a pretty good red orange. So you can kind of see how different that color looks. Try to get it in that little corner right there. Stay nice and neat. And now we move on to blue violet. And I may have a little bit of, no, I think I'm gonna have to make more violet. So I'm gonna put a little bit of red in the couplet. A little bit of blue. And it should be a bit more blue than violet. So maybe I'll add a little bit more just to make it a bit more blue. That looks good. Try to take off some of the excess, get my brush to be a nice point so that it's nice to go in there and get as close to that line. And last we have yellow orange and I don't have any other little cup in here so I'm just going to do it in this little middle space and add a little bit of orange to that. If not you can always just mix more orange and add a little bit to the yellow orange. Remember that it should be more yellow than orange because yellow orange Sorry, because yellow is the dominant color in yellow orange. So let me go ahead and try to mix in. I don't even know if I'm going to have enough. Probably won't have enough. And Ms. Brown just walked in. Good morning, Ms. Brown. Yes, I am. You want to say hi to the class? Hi. I thought you were going to do it during Okay, so there we go. We have yellow-orange. 